Hola, señoritas. My name is Wu Qing. I'm 80 years old. Uh, my paid job is a professor. I retired in the year 2000. I used to teach English skill courses as well as American studies. But at the same time, uh, I used to be a local politician from 84 to 2011 at Haidian District, which this district is very special. All the students' movements started there. The first one was in 1919, and the second one was in 1989. Uh, so that, were, that is a very special place and I got democratically elected many times, and that was rare, very rare. And then uh, at the same time, I was a gender specialist for a Canadian International Development Agency. I think that role has played a very important role uh, stage in my life because with that role I could go to rural areas. So in 1990 I went to Gansu. It is a province in northeast China, northwest China, I'm sorry, and it's a very dry area. With rain there's a harvest, without rain there's famine. And I went in the summer of 1990 I went to a village in Huining, and I saw poverty. People didn't have enough to eat, and uh, water was scarce. Sometimes people just had to walk about one day just to get sometimes, you know, this one glass or two glasses of water. Uh, but I couldn't read news about that, either in the paper, and I couldn't watch it on television, I couldn't hear it over the radio. It was disclosed. But that, I was shocked. But I, since then I know that is my responsibility to make changes, because I am a citizen. And now actually I want to be a global citizen because the world is really getting smaller. It doesn't mean that it's shrinking in size, but because of IT, like now with Facebook, with Google, which cannot be used in mainland China, but now we have WeChat. Anything that happens in one part of the world, we could know about that in one or two seconds. And that's why I have more responsibility, because I want to change. I think this world has to be a place where both men and women, especially women and men, should be equal. So education is very important. Education helps to bridge the gap of inequality. So there should be equality, development, and peace for people throughout the world. Uh, and for the, that kind of work that I've been doing, I got the uh, Ramon Magsaysay Award in 2001, which is the Nobel Prize in Asia. And then I was chosen by Schwab Foundation in 2003 as one of the world's outstanding social entrepreneurs and then I got more prices. But that is the past. It's over. I just want to do more because that's my responsibility. Uh, I think I'm very lucky to have my parents who had taught me to be a responsible person. 
uh, actually, when I was a little girl, my mom told me that I am a human being before I'm a girl. And boys are human beings first before they are boys. So boys and girls are equal. And that's why wherever I go, I take this along with me. This is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So being a girl or a woman, we have to know that we are born with all the rights in this world. We are no worse than men because we are a human being. That's most important. So uh, I do hope my sisters in Latin America would read this and would try to read all the constitutions that you have in your respect countries and see if your constitution should follow this if you have your country has signed with the United Nations. I think this is very, very important. This is the Bible that helps you to protect your own rights. This is important. So I think, you know, I always carry this with me. And the, another one is this. This is the uh, Convention on the Elimination of All Discrimination against women. So this is also important, right? So you have to protect your own rights. And I would like to tell you actually, I, when I was on the board of Global Fund for Women, which is based in uh, San Francisco, the United States, uh, we had an outreach trip. And I went to Uganda, Uganda, Rwanda, and Zimbabwe. My trip to Rwanda and Uganda made me want to be a global citizen because I saw, I went into a square that I saw the massacre that took place in 1994. So many people had been killed. So I think being a human being, we have to speak up. And at that time, a lot of countries, the governments of a lot of countries, didn't speak up. So I think it is so important to know that no rights are granted or given. You have to speak up. And you have to stand up. You have to fight for the rights that are clearly stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, because we are a human being. And now I would like to tell you a story about myself. When I was about two, a little over two, my parents, uh, we were in Yunnan. It's a province in uh, north, uh, southwest China which is warm all the year around. When I was about two, uh, when we stayed in Yunnan, Kunming, it's in the outskirts of Kunming, one of our neighbors had a little dog, and I just loved it. But it was not mine. I wanted to have my own dog that would follow me every single minute. So I begged my mom to let me raise a dog. My mother said, yes, of course you can raise a dog, but you have to do four things. You have to promise me, and you have to keep the promise, or else you will not be able to raise the dog. I said, what are the four things? Number one, people eat, the dog eats, so you have to feed the dog. People drink, dogs drink, so you have to feed, provide the dog with water. Number three is that dogs and human beings are different. Dogs have fur all around, so you have to brush the dog. 
every single day. And then the last one is that we lived in Chenggong. That's in the outskirts. And there were woods around. There were wolves. So my mom said, you have to get the dog home every single night or else it might be eaten up by the wolf. I said, yes, I would do that. So that was a promise and I kept it. So that was my first oral contract with my mom. So to me, I feel contract is so important. Contract means if you make a promise, you have to keep it. You always have to remember it. It's a commitment. It's a responsibility. And that has made me feel that I am a responsible, if I were a responsible person, I just had to keep it. And that has been with my life, all my life. I think that's important. So I think it's important for mothers, especially young mothers, to respect your child or children because children are also human beings. So your children are not yours. They are individuals. They have their own ideas, but you can advise them to do things. So I think you have to tell your children or child from very early on the do's and the don'ts so that they would respect the laws as early as possible. I think this is important. So no, the do's and don'ts. And then they have to also know they are not the only people in this world. There are so many people around them coming from different places. They have different colors in their skins, in their hairs, in their eyes. They are all human beings. So we have to call them sisters and brothers. Because if we live peacefully and friendly together, then this world would be peaceful. And then there would be rule of law. There won't be any wars or conflicts, right? So I think it is important for parents to train your children or train people to become a whole person. To be a whole person, actually, there are six criteria. Number one, you have to know about your rights as well as your responsibilities. Just like your hand, there are two sides. They go together, right? So your rights as well as your responsibilities. Number two, it is very important for women. You have to be independent. Always stand on your two own legs or feet. Do not think that you could marry a millionaire so that you don't have to worry about the rest of your life. That's no good. Because who knows when your husband might, might run away with somebody or you have different values, right? So I think financial independence is very important. And then you have to learn to make your own decisions. And that's why parents have to let children to decide when they are young. And they have to also know, once you have made the decision, you have to take the consequences. And then you can sum up, like, ah, I've made the wrong decision, so I would not make that kind of decision anymore. So we always have to reflect what we have done. Like every night before you go to bed. Right? Sum up what you have done, right? So remember, the second is independence. Make your own decisions, have your own points of view, financially independence. This is important. Number three is em environmental protection. No matter where you go, don't litter the ground. Don't litter the floor. 
because we need a clean environment and because we have not paid attention to environment sometimes some countries like china has developed so fast i put that in quotes we neglect it environment so our water over 70% is polluted and the soil is polluted and the air is polluted it's very very difficult so i think being women we have to pay attention to what's going around us development has to have a women's face women have to be part of decisions for development you have to try to get in there because they would not invite us they would not sometimes they do but sometimes they don't sometimes they only pay a lip service you can be there to show that we have women in there but you can't make decisions so you have to be there i think women should try to remake all the laws international laws in this world to protect women because all the rights in a way have been made by men right so i think it's important for women to be in there and once you are representative of women then you have to go back to your sisters to find out what they need not what you need number four is education we have to know about like um, formal education and informal education we have to pay attention to the goal of education and the methodologies used in the content number five is health and sanitation we need to have a good lifestyle and then uh, especially in spring when there are ec- epidemics going around you have to know what to do right you have to train the children to have good lifestyles like they have to wash their hands before meals wash their hands after going to the toilets and all that especially for girls when they have menstruation how they take care of themselves right so uh, this is number 5 Number six is that we have to fight against violence, domestic violence, as well as school bullying. So we have to know that people are different. There are differences. It's natural. It's nothing bad. But the the only thing is that how are we going to solve it? Not through fist fights or wars, but to have communications and dialogues. It's between individuals. families and nations as well because it is only peace that can provide both men and women to have gender equality and peaceful development yes those are the six criteria for a whole person si cambiamos la mirada haremos que el mundo cambie que perder